Hello everyone. So I've got a bit of an issue. In a previous video, I added a couple of fans to this airbrush compressor. This is the air compressor that I'm using for my CNC router. I found that it's a good balance of airflow and size and noise to run my fog buster and also control the blast gate on the router. I added these fans on top, hoping that it would cool it down and give me a little bit higher duty cycle so I could run it a little bit more continuously. The fans work great, but the mounts do not. I made these fans out of, or the fan mounts, out of PLA, which is a 3D printed thermoplastic. And of course, I should have known this over time, the amount of heat that builds up in this head is enough to slowly start to warp these. Now, I didn't think that would be that big of an issue, but what I didn't think about was it essentially ends up making this screw back out a little bit and loosen, and that is what holds the seal on top of the cylinder head. So when this softens, screw gets a little bit loose, and then this breaks its seal, and then the thing stops doing the thing that it's supposed to be doing. So I need to fix that. Instead of using um, 3D printed plastic parts, I decided to use some metal and bend this into the profile that I need using a 3D printed die. So let's see how that goes. Designing the piece was relatively straightforward. I already had the 3D printed piece, so I had the design for that. And I knew the dimension from here to here, and I knew the dimension for the fan mounting holes. So it was just a matter of figuring out how far this needed to be out, and then how far up it needed to be, and then just kind of making a part that fit those dimensions. The length of each piece when fully flattens turned out to be about two and a half inches long. So I marked that on the pieces of aluminum and then just cut that on the bandsaw. And I'll need a total of eight pieces to mount the two fans. Since none of these dimensions are really all that critical, I'm just using a washer that has about the same diameter as the width of the stock. This allows me to mark the radius and the location for the hole, so when I go over to the belt sander I have a nice kind of guide for how much I need to grind off, and then over to the drill press so I can drill all the holes out. I'm just using a punch to mark the center locations for the holes, and then I'm going to move over to the sander and add the radiuses on these. The radius really isn't absolutely necessary on the top side because it doesn't really interfere with anything on the fan, but where it mounts to the top of the compressor, it definitely needs a radius for clearance. So I'm just grinding this down with the sander. It doesn't have to be really all that precise. I just basically need to knock off the corners. One end of these gets drilled with a smaller hole and the other side with a larger hole. The smaller hole gets tapped to an 832 thread size and the other just remains a through hole and that is the one that will connect into the top of the compressor head.
Tapping is always satisfying when it goes right and it's easy. An eighth inch aluminum is about as easy as it comes. So just using a drill, a little bit of tap magic, it's nice and relaxing. Okay, so now we're getting to the fun stuff. So we've got eight of these little things and we need to bend them. So I've got these two little dies that will go inside the jaws of my vise here. Now you don't need to use a vise like this, um, just a simple bench top vise would work, but I have this vise, so I'm going to use this one. And I have two little pockets for magnets. So I have these, um, I think they're half inch diameter, maybe eighth inch deep which allows them to just kind of stick in there nice and easy. And then the other one has a little pocket down the side and that just drops in like that. So they just line up kind of like that. And when we close the vise, it will squish whatever is inside of here. Couple little notes about these two pieces. These are just PLA, nothing crazy here. These are 100% infill, so they are completely solid, which is really nice and helpful for this application. I did try 80% infill and it did crush. You will need a 100%. Any void that's left inside of here is going to be an issue. Now, the way I designed these may or may not be the right way to do it. In SolidWorks, you saw that I had this piece in its finished form, and all I did is I basically just put that piece in between these, made an assembly, and then basically just made the shape around this. So when this is fully closed, this is the shape that it will form with the eighth inch gap in the middle of there. The other thing that I did is the keying feature here is the bottom of the vise. So when this is all the way at the bottom, the distance from the bottom to the point where it's supposed to be bending is 15 millimeters. So these are designed with this little lip on the side so where they will be in exactly the right spot. The part is symmetrical, so the bends don't really matter. The bend is the same for one side. I just kind of have to flip it for each one. And that's really all there is to it. So let's get nice and up close on this and let's um, bend some of these. Unfortunately, my mic cut out, so I didn't have any audio for this, but this is what the first one looks like while bending. As you can see, everything looks like it worked out just fine. The geometry was good, it bent nice and clean. However, I started having some issues with some of the others that I tried bending. So as you can see, these just don't want to bend the same way. Um, they end up cracking um, way too soon and I'm really not giving it that much pressure. I even tried going really slowly. So yeah, I'm not really sure at this point what's going on. Um, I think I maybe have too tight of a bend radius. I might need to increase that. Maybe something to do with the sanding um, heated them unevenly and there were some stress risers in there. Not really sure what's going on, but exactly half of them bent just fine and the other half broke with pretty minimal effort. So yeah, kind of interesting results. So I've got something to admit. I spent far too much time focusing on the die and the material and all sorts of other things about the 3D printed aspect of this and didn't really ever consider the material itself. And about five minutes of Googling tells me that 6061 is a really awful material to try and bend. Most 6061 ships in a hardened state, um, 6061 T6 as example, and it is just terrible at bending. Here are some few examples of what it looks like when you try and bend it. Now to bend 6061 properly, you need to have it in an annealed state. Um, quite simply, we need to heat it, relax the material so it's a little bit more soft, and then we can bend it more properly. So let's give that a shot. Thankfully, with the power of video editing, all of this is relatively simple. So I went ahead and made six new of these, and as you see, I did not do any of the radiusing on the edges. I'm gonna keep it straight for right now, just so it's easier to lay into the vise. 
So for round two, I'm going to be heating all of these up. I just have one of these little handheld torches, nothing crazy, nothing fancy, and I'm just gonna heat them for about eh, 15 seconds or so right at the bend lines. I'm doing this off camera because I don't wanna do it on my workbench for obvious reasons. And um, we do wanna make sure that these are fully cool before they go into the little vise because well, plastic likes to melt when it's hot, so we're just gonna let these air cool until they are um, cool to the touch. I figured I might as well show what it looks like heating it up. I did 10 seconds per end per side for a total of 40 seconds. And this looks really awkward in the video because I was trying to hold it, look off to the side and make sure I was in frame and hold the flame and make sure I wasn't burning myself. Trust me, the others didn't look nearly this awkward. Okay, time for round two. These are nice and cooled down. I did make a slight change to this die, thinking that that might be part of the problem before I researched the aluminum. And I just add a little bit more of a relief in there. And I also cut the bottom off a little bit because it was kind of interfering with the bottom. So let's get these lined up and let's see how this works. Make sure it's straight up and down. Yeah, it looks good. Let's give it a shot. Now that was much easier. And that is exactly how it's supposed to bend. So yeah, and if we look at the edge, it looks really nice. No cracking, no issues. Just a little bit of marring, but yeah, not a big deal. So let's see, let's do the other side. That was the vice handle. There we go. That's how this was supposed to work. Um, looks really nice. And there is one of our finished pieces. Let's go ahead and do the other five. I went ahead and bent the rest of the brackets and um, all of them bent without issue. It was a lot easier and this just felt like this was the way it was supposed to go. I really wish I would have known to do this ahead of time, but that's why you do these things. You know, you learn and you figure out the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. If you don't figure out the wrong way to do something, you might not know what the right way really is. You kind of need to fail to know how to succeed. I know that's some pretty deep philosophy for you in this metal bending video, but it's true. You need to know what works and what doesn't work. Um, both, I think, are equally important at times. And here are the new finished ones. And as you can see, they're pretty consistent. I was pretty happy about that. Um, there's not that much variation in the bend. So I'd say the die worked um, just fine. So next step, I'm going to sand off the edges on all of these and um, get them finally mounted up and we'll finish this thing out. So I learned a lot from this and that is really good. Um, still learning is a good thing. Annealing aluminum, definitely something you should try doing before you go to bend it. Um, it just isn't going to work out all that well. As far as the dies, I learned that the actual design of the die is a lot less critical than I thought it would be. Um, adding this little bit of a relief on this one helped out quite a bit. Um, maybe you can see this from the video. There is basically almost no wear whatsoever, and this one bent all of them, including a lot of test pieces that I did off camera. And it's just really a little bit of, you know, aluminum dust um, or patina on there that just kind of wipes off. So yeah, pretty happy with the dies. I will be definitely doing this more. Um, as far as the finished product, Here are the mounts on the top of the cylinders, and yeah, everything worked out great. Um, they're not, you know, like perfectly flat. You might see a little bit of gaps. I didn't, you know, get these perfectly at a, um, I don't even know what angle it is, but this surface is not exactly parallel to that surface, but they work out just fine, and they're really sturdy. You can pick this thing up by these, 
everything lined up. I was really surprised that with all this bending that all four corners lined up okay. So yeah, overall, um, seven out of 10 for this project. I'm pretty with, happy with how it turned out. And that is really, at the end of the day, all that matters is if I'm happy. Um, so hopefully you got something out of this. I know I learned a lot from this video. As always, thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates. And um, yeah, in the future, let's do some more metal bending. Thanks for watching. See you next time.